All right, let's get started. Today we are going to continue on Python primer. First, I'm going to talk about course logistics and then going to discuss some Python functionalities and possibly Python style guide. First, course logistics. Um, last time um, I did a survey and one of the questions was, which one do you prefer between online lectures and face-to-face -face lectures? And majority of you preferred online lectures to face-to-face -face lectures. I guess online lectures are more proper to communicate because you can send me some messages. And so from today, you are going to have online lectures rather than face-to-face -face lectures. But I will have some face-to-face -face lectures for Q&A in the future. In TA recitation, in fact, starts today. Um, it starts from 7 p.m. and it's going to be around one hour. And you can join TA recitation through the same Zoom link as the classroom. And because of um, TA's schedule conflict, we cannot offer Monday or Wednesday TA recitations, sorry for that. And I changed the due of homework one. Uh, it is now March 14th, 1 p.m. before the class starts uh, because um, I slowed down a little bit, the pace a little bit. And then I thought I could finish Python Primer last week. However, we're still um, discussing Python Primer. So homework one is about Python Primer. And because I haven't finished talking about Python Primer, the due is changed. And still, some of you think that like around 30 or 40 percent of you think that the speed of lectures is quite fast. I'll try to explain in as much detail as possible. All right, uh, regarding course logistics, are there any questions? Um, there is one question. Um, what should we do if we have class at the recitation time? Um, TAs, all right, let's talk about this. Um, TA has uploaded the recitation material on the course website, and you can check this uh, recitation material. The link is broken, but I will update it. Anyway, you can check this recitation material, and if you have some questions, you can ask TAs or email TAs for your questions. All right, are there any questions, any other questions regarding course logistics? And you can access to the class collab through this link. Um, we haven't planned to record uh, the recitation However, I can discuss this with TAs. All right, I'll discuss if TAs can record uh, the recitation and upload it on YouTube. Thank you for your questions. Any other questions regarding course logistics? All right, let's get started. Um, today, we are going to talk about containers of Python. In fact, uh, we talked about lists last time. Um, container, as the name suggests, it helps us contain some items. And list is a sequence of items. We saw this. And there is one thing um, I need to talk about that is slicing. Let's say we define a list like this, containing some odd numbers. And I told you that we can convert 
a sequence of numbers into a list using this list function or initiator. And what we want to do is uh, print All right, and we can also, so what it does is it returns the length of a list. All right, so this odds i returns just a single item, all right? So i changes from zero to four, right? So odds zero. and odds one are going to be three and five. And that has the length of one, all right? So if you print out the length of, okay. I think I need to discuss it in a little bit later. And we can uh, use the function max and function mean to find out the minimum and the maximum value among this list, all right? And what I wanna do is like this. Let's say we have numbers like this. And we wanna find or collect the squares of these numbers. And what we can do is using this for loop, for x in nums, squares dot append x squared like this. Then the result is squared of numbers in this num list, all right? And what we can do is shortening this part by using list comprehension. So this is uh, slicing, accessing just a part of subset of items inside a list. And here, what we're discuss discussing is list comprehension. So what I wanna do is shorten this part. So rather than defining a for loop, we can create the same squares like this. So squares list and squares under bar two have the same values. So basically these two operations have the same effect, right? So we can shorten this one as this one. And this process is called list comprehension, all right? I'm going to give you another example. And list comprehension is very important because um, this one is called Pythonic programming because in Python, we want to shorten uh, some complex, complicated expressions into shorter ones. And this one is called Pythonic style. So this feature does not, um, other languages like C++ or Java do not have these kind of features. This one is only for Python. And I'm going to give you another example. Uh, this was for numbers. This list comprehension was for numbers. And we can do the same thing for strings. The quick brown fox uh, jumps over the lazy dog. Let's say we have this variable sentence. And we can collect words from this sentence using split function. All right, then what words are going to be? 
it is a list of words. So if you call this split function, it will split the given sentence and make it into a list of words inside this sentence. All right. And what we can do is for word in words, if word is not the, let's say we define a word length list like this. And if the word is not the, then we want to add the length of this word to this list, all right? And the result is going to be, uh, we'll skip this part because it is the, and when it comes to quick, it has the length of five, one, two, three, four, five. And then we go to the next one, and the length is also five, length is three, length is five, four, and the is skipped, and this one has the length of four, and this one has the length of three. So that is why five, five, three, five, four, four, three appear here. All right. So this is quite simple, right? And we can shorten these three line expressions into a single line expression. So I'll show you how to do this. Uh, land word or word in words if word is not the. So basically, this one does the same job as this part, all right? So what we do is basically iterate through the items inside this list. In means items inside this list. So this part is iterating through the items inside this list. And we can add some condition at the end like this, all right? So compared to this one, this one is squaring the numbers inside this nums list, all right? So this is uh, called list comprehension. So basically we are shortening for loop into a single expression, single line expression, that is all, all right? Uh, any questions up to this point? All right, cool. So this comprehension is basically creating some uh, special lists from existing lists, all right? So you can think of it as transforming a given list into another with a single line expression. And another cool thing we can do is we can iterate through two lists at the same time. Let's say we have these two lists. And what we can do is, uh, so this one is basically, Let's transform this one into two uh, for loops. So we are iterating through two lists. So this one basically does this job, double loops, all right? So you can iterate through two lists in a single line expression, all right? And there was a very good um, question. Um, 
in this case, we call a function at the end of this entity or object. But when it comes to, uh, max or mean functions, we pass the parameter inside this parenthesis. So what are the differences? That is a very good question. Um, this will be clear. This will be clearer when we discuss objects, object-oriented programming. Um, at the moment, you can think of it as um, this append is only applicable for these lists. So this function is not actually function, but it is called method. This one belongs to lists. Other objects cannot use this append function. However, max can take in any types of entities like lists or some numbers or tuples, what we're going to talk tuples that we are going to talk in a later, talk in short. So for functions that accept parameters in this way, can process many types of parameters. However, you can call this append function only for this. You cannot use a pen for other objects. And when it comes to uh, string dot split, you cannot use this split function, split only for strings. You cannot call this split for other objects. Right? You cannot call this one for list, all right? So that is the difference. Okay. And I would like to give you some uh, practice questions. Uh, the first one is, what will be the results of running this code? Can you guys guess? Uh, for those of you who already solved this exercise, uh, try to think about these problems as well. Uh, 
I'll give you like two more minutes and have a look at these two exercises together. Uh, solve these practice questions using least comprehension. Um, all right, thank you for sharing your answers. Um, let's have a look at the first one first. Look at the first one. Uh, when we run this code, the result is A, B, C, D, F, H, I. So what we are doing is iterating through each item inside this sequence. So here, for X in sequence means X becomes ABC in the first iteration. And in the next iteration, it's going to be DEF and G and HI, all right? Then X, when it is ABC, has the length larger than one. So it is going to be processed. And for Y in X means it's going to separate each character inside X. So in the first, iteration, X is ABC, and Y becomes A and B and C, all right? So that's why A, B, C appears here. And in the next iteration, X becomes D, F, because X is iterating through the sequence list. And when, it come, when X becomes D, F, it is here, and Y becomes D, and E and F. And when Y becomes E, it is not included in this list. So that's why D and F, skipping E, appears here. And G, because it has the length not larger than one, 
it is here. And HI also gets separated like this, all right? And for Sorry for that. And for these practice questions, I'm going to solve the first two questions with you. And you can think about these three other problems on your own after class, okay? So let's talk about the first. Um, sorry for this one. All right, the first question is quite easy. So for question one, the answer is we are going to select a number n or n in range one through 101 because we wanna check numbers from one to 100. And we are skipping the last one. We do not include the last one indicated here. If n percent seven equals zero, this means n is divisible by seven, okay? And the second question is, same as the first one, like this. And this condition might be somewhat confusing at first. And what we can do is, there are many other ways, but we can uh, convert this number into string and check whether three is inside this string or not, okay? So this is what we learned in the last class. All right, so up to this point, we talked about lists and list comprehension. And another type of containers is dictionaries. Dictionaries. So from now on, I'm going to talk about dictionaries. So what are dictionaries? I'll show you some examples. Uh, let's say, In the case of list, we just contain some numbers in a sequence or some items in a sequence. And when it comes to dictionaries, we have two entities. Uh, oh, and box. Like this. So, in the case of dictionary, we have keys and item like this. So we have a list of key and item, key two, item two, like this. So when we want to access to, so we are basically storing some pairs of items. So this is different from list. It does not have two things in one position, but this one in one position, we have two entities, key and item. So when we want to access some items inside this list, we access these items through key, okay? The item stored at the key cat is one. And the item stored with the key dog is two, all right? However, you need to be careful with this one because we cannot access to an item by the item itself, all right? 
it says there is no key such as two, right? So when you want to access to some items inside this dictionary, you need to access through keys rather than the items itself. So be careful about this. And after we define this dictionary, we can update or remove some items from dictionaries. Let me show you how to do this. So let's say I wanna enter another item pair called fish and a number four. Then now in our list, fish is added. Okay. And we can also use this get method or function. And we enter this key and it will return the item belongs to this key, which is four, okay? And sometimes we wanna avoid occurring, incurring some errors. And we wanna retrieve an item, monkey. However, there is nothing related to monkey in this dictionary. Then in this case, if you use get, it will return none, all right? And another fun thing we can do is if we pass default, then it will return default if there is nothing related to monkey, all right? So when we access to this dictionary with this monkey item, it will incur an error, right? But this one avoids errors, all right? And so if there is no monkey, then it will return default, all right? Let's see another example. And what happens if we pass fish here, then it will return four because fish is one of the keys inside this dictionary, all right? And we can do uh, other things like uh, len, then it will return the number of items or pairs of items inside this dictionary, like this four, all right? So this is dictionary. And there are also other functionalities of dictionaries. Uh, let's say numerals, define another list like this. And I told you that this len function returns the number of pairs inside this dictionary. And we can also retrieve the values from this list like this. Using this values function. And then you can call this list and it will become a list. All right. So now it returns, it removes these keys or returns the items, one, five, 10, like this, okay? And are there any ways to create dictionaries, something like list, like this, as we did in list? Yes, we can create a list uh, as it did for list, like this. You can call dict, like this. So you just pass a list of pairs of items, then it will become a dictionary if you call this one, okay? 
And from up to this point, we talked about how we can create a dictionary and how we can add some items to, this, to these dictionaries. And how can it delete some items from a, a dictionary that is using this del operation? So from this, So if we call del ddd1, this will remove the pair belongs to this key one, all right? So this one is removed and the rest remains here. So using this del operation is to remove some pairs of items inside a dictionary, okay? So this was pretty much about dictionary. And we can also do the same uh, dictionary comprehension as we did for lists like this. Let's say uh, we have some numbers like this. You can create a dictionary like this. So this one um, corresponds to index or key, and this one corresponds to the item, all right? So we are iterating through the numbers inside this nums list. And if we filter out if this number is even or odd, all right? We only keep the odd numbers, uh, even numbers, and then square them, all right? So the remaining one, are going to be zero, two, four. So they are going to be the keys to this dictionary and the items inside are going to be squared of the keys, okay? So we can do the same thing uh, as we did for list. So we can do dictionary comprehension. So you better understand these comprehensions thoroughly. All right, that was about dictionaries. Are there any questions up to this point? So today we are talking about containers that Python provides. And we talked about list and dictionaries. If there is no question, I'll continue. Mm -hmm. List comprehension, 마지막에 주셨던 exercise에서 yep. 질문을 드리고 싶은 게 하나 있습니다. Yep. 어, 거기서 처리된 순서가 A, B, C 담고, D, E, F 담고, H, I 담고, 그 다음에 이제 그 다음에 가서 각각을 A, B, C 이렇게 알파벳 단위로 분리를 하는 건지 아니면 A, B, C 담고 알파벳 단위로 분리하고 그 다음에 D, F 담고 알파벳 단위로 분리하고 이런 순서로 되는 건지 여쭤보고 uh, 싶습니다. Yeah, that is a good question. Uh, this one is... Like this. Now, can you understand this part? So this one is equivalent to this code block. All right, think about it after class, okay? All right, let's move on. And another um, containers that Python provides is called set. As you can imagine, um, set is very similar to lists. However, sets do not consider the order of items. Let's talk about what that means. Let's say we have a set like this. So for dictionaries, 
we use these curly braces. And for sets, we use the same curly braces like this. However, when it comes to dictionaries, we present a pair of items, like key and item pairs. But for sets, we just list the items without keys. So that is the difference, right? So it could be confusing at the first glance. However, they are different. You just provide one item, all right? And we can check if cat is inside these animals and it will return true, all right? And we can also check whether fish is in animals like this, then it will return false because there is no fish in this set, all right? And when you want to sum items to this set, you can just call this add function. Then it will add fish here. You can also call this len function. And it will say this set contains three items, all right? And when you want to remove some items from this set, you can call this remove function and indicate what you want to remove. Okay, so cat is removed from set. All right, and we can uh, do the same uh, list comprehension for sets. So that is called set comprehension. So that is very easy. Uh, here, not worry about this part. I just want to use this square root root. Let's say I want to find out the square root of some numbers like this. And it will free now, one, two, three, four, five. All right, can you guys understand this part? So this is not that difficult. And when you want to iterate through the items, You can basically do the same thing as you do as you did for uh, lists. So iteration through uh, the items inside this set is very similar to what we did for list, all right? And there was a question uh, for dictionary, do item and value uh, refer to the same thing? Yeah, they refer to the same thing. So basically, if you understood lists very well, then dictionaries and sets are very simple, all right? Okay, and for the last uh, containers we're going to talk about in this class is called tuples. Some people read it tuple and others read it tuples, whatever is okay. Anyway, let's talk about tuples. Uh, one important aspect about tuples is that it's immutable. That means once you deter, um, define a tuple, you cannot change the values inside this tuple. All right. I'm going to talk about what immutable means 
in more detail. All right, uh, tuple is basically defined by these two parentheses, okay? And you can access to the items of this tuple using these brackets, okay? And when you try to change the value of this value, then it will incur an error. Because once you define a tuple, you, can, you cannot change the values inside. So this one is why it is called a immutable data structure. And why do we need this kind of immutable data structures? Can you guys guess? Um, yeah, one suggestion was to store some default values. Um, tuples or immutable data structures are to store very important values. So for example, yeah, to prevent overriding is another good um, answer. So we do not want to change these values. So for example, let's say we wanna store pi. And this number does not change, right? But if we define it as a number, then other people can change this value as five, like this, in other parts of code. However, if you define it as a tuple, like this, the other people cannot change the value of pi in other parts of our program, all right? So Sebin gave a good answer. We cannot redefine tuples. Once we define this tuple, then it is just there. So it is for storing um, unchangeable values, all right? Like for example, um, some constant numbers like pi, or birthday of some other people, all right? The immutable um, data structures are to store very important or sensitive values. Sensitive. So in one part of your program, you define some variables as tuples, then other programmers cannot change these values, okay? All right. So up to this point, we talked about some containers provided by Python, list, dictionaries, sets, and tuples. Okay, so for other containers, we could change the values inside. However, for tuples, we cannot change the values inside. All right. And there was another question. Uh, when it comes to remove, we can call the same remove for list and set. Even though they have the same uh, names, they are different functions. All right. Pigeon, does it answer your question? All right. So from now on, we're going to talk about functions of Python. Uh, why do we define functions? Because we do not want to repeat the same functionality again and again. So let's, um, so this is to make our code concise or simple as possible. And defining function comes with this def keyword. And here, so basically def and function name follows here. And you start, you open a parenthesis like this and receive or denote the parameters and use 
colon here and then do something. So basically this is the structure of defining a function, okay? So for example, let's implement a sine function that determines the sine of this uh, number. So if X is larger than zero, it returns positive. And here you can define a return value. So after calling this function, it will return some values. I'll show you what this means in more detail. If X is smaller than zero, it returns negative. Else it returns zero. All right. So for X in minus one, zero, and one. So it will say negative zero and positive. All right. So So this one returns positive, the string positive, and stores the value inside this variable result. So when we print our results, it will become positive, right? However, function does not necessarily have to return some values, all right? You can just print positive and don't have to return some values, okay? So in that case, uh, let's have a look at what this results. So in this case, the sine function does not return anything. And I told you that nothing in Python is represented by this none object. So it returns none after printing out this negative, positive, or zero. So none appears here, okay? And another thing we can do with functions in Python is passing some default optional parameters like this. So let's say, if you want to make it loud, you can print hello capital. Else. So if we just pass the num uh, some values here, then it could be false if we do not pass anything. So let's say So for this function, we do not pass the loud value. In that case, it is false because this is the default value. However, if we uh, denote that loud is true, then it becomes true, okay? So we can choose to pass this variable parameter or not, okay? All right. And I would like to give you one exercise. Uh, try to predict the result of running this code block. Think about it.
I'll give you one more minute. All right, thank you for sharing your answers. Um, let's run the first part. And when we run the first part, the result is 129.29. Because when we pass zero, so here, take is now zero, and make is now 29, right? And when cake is zero, we're going to add one to the cake. So now cake becomes one here. And we want to print out cake. So that appears here. And when cake is one, we want to print out make, that is 29. And then we pass this else statement because we satisfy the condition here. So we are going to return make. And the result of running this part is 29. Then it will print out 29 once more. So the result is 29, all right? And what is the result of running the second expression? In this case, uh, cake is one, all right? So cake is one, so this part is skipped. And we pass to this part and cake is one. So we are going to print out make. So that is mashed potatoes. And we are going to skip this part because this part is satisfied. So we are going to return make, which is mashed potatoes. And it is going to print out mashed potatoes. So the total result is 129.29 mashed potatoes and mashed potatoes, All right? And I would like to mention one more thing about functions. Uh, when you design functions, we generally want our functions to do a single job. I'll talk about what this means with this example. Let's say if you wanna check out uh, if two strings have the same value or two numbers have the same values, same length. So for example, this is going to be true because they have two lengths and this will return false because the length of this one is three and the length of this one is two. So this is what we want to implement. So what we can do is a digits equals zero, while a is larger than zero. What we are going to do is count the number of uh, the digits of the first one. And we can do the same thing, B digits. And we're going to return. If these two digits have the same length like this. However, when you look at this implementation, 
these two parts have the same look, appearance. In that case, what we can do is define another function like num visits. This one return uh, receives a number. So we can make this part as another function like num digits, all right? And what we are what I'm going to do is so rather than implementing this function as this one, we're going to remove or turn this repeating part as another function like this, and we'll delete this part like this. Okay, then the implementation becomes more simpler, becomes simpler and clearer, all right? And much easier to understand. So functions generally do a single job. So that's what I meant by this. So I'll leave this part. All right, so that was about functions. Um, and there are some special um, default functions provided by Python that is called maps. Reduce. I'll just briefly introduce these three functions. Um, they are not that difficult. Uh, I'll just introduce map first, and then you can have a look at the references of filter and reduce, all right? Um, let's say we have some names of our paths. So Alfred, Abisa, William, Arla, all right? And we want to make these names capitalized. So when you want to do that, what you can do is, Call this upper function or method as we did. So this is pretty similar to what we did for list comprehension, right? So all the names are capitalized. However, uh, we can do this uh, with this comprehension, but we can even further uh, simplify the list comprehension by defining some other function like this. Let's say this third upper function receives a string and return capitalized string like this. All right. And what we can do is call this map function. So what it does is it maps this third upper function to each item inside this my pets list. So we are um, shortening, simplifying this part 
with this single line expression. So that is what basically map does. So map is, map is mapping the given function star upper to each item inside this list. Okay, that is what map is about. All right. So that is what map is about. And I'll give you um, some other examples. I'll leave some other examples in this class collab after class. So you can have a look at on that. So up to this point, are there any questions? Okay. And the last topic that I want to discuss today is higher order functions. So what are higher order functions? Uh, up to this point, our functions could receive some other numbers or objects. However, higher order functions takes another functions as arguments or returns a function as its result. All right, so higher order functions receives functions as arguments or returns a function as its result. So why do we do this? Uh, let's have a look at this one. Uh, let's say we want to calculate the sum of uh, just normal numbers and squared numbers and cubed numbers like this. And when we see this, they have the same computational structure, right? So what we can do is, so we are going to implement summing naturals with this sum natural function. And what we can do is total k is zero and one, while k is smaller than n. So this is what basically implements this summation function. All right, so what we are going to do is from zero to n, so here n is five, we're going to sum these numbers to total and return total, all right? And for squares, we can basically do the same thing, right? However, rather than um, saving k, we're going to save k cubed uh, squared, all right? And for cubes, we're going to cube these numbers. And they basically have the same structure, computation structure. And how can you simplify this implementation? We can do this, simplify this implementation by utilizing higher order functions, all right? So how can you generalize this computation process? Uh, let's first define identity. And this one returns the same number it receives. And the square function return squared version of k. And this cube returns k cubed like this. And we can define summation like this. Yeah. 
basically we do the same thing as the previous one. And what we are going to do is, while k is smaller than a, what we are going to do is, So here we can pass term, which is function here. And we can simplify this implementation using this summation function, all right? So what we are basically doing is um, some squares for some squares, what we are going to do is summation five and pass square like this. So this, this will basically do the same thing as the first impl implementation, some naturals. So this implementation corresponds to this one and this sum squares becomes by passing square, you can get the same result. And for some cubes, you can just pass cube function. So this summation function receives two things. The first parameter is just number, n here. And the second parameter is another function, how you are going to modify these numbers here, okay? So by using, um, higher order functions, you can simplify implementation, some implementations like this. And this, so I told you that higher order functions takes another function as arguments or returns a function as its result. So this one is the, uh, this one is the example of a higher order function that takes another function as arguments. And I'm going to show you another example. Uh, that returns functions as its return value. Let's say we want to define a function like this. And this one is a make adder function. So this one returns a function rather than just a simple number. So to do that, we are going to define another function inside this function body. And this function returns an adder that adds n to the given number k, all right? And it, we are going to return this adder. And what we can do is, So what is the type of this adder example? That is a function. So this one basically returns a function adder like this. So we can pass some numbers to this adder. Let's say we pass six and it's going to add three to this number. So that is what this uh, make adder is doing, all right? All right, so time is up, um, but I still need to uh, cover some other materials. So I'll just keep on, and if you have to leave, you can freely leave, and I'll unload this video on the YouTube so you can check it, but still I'll keep on uh, explaining other functions, other uh, materials. So up to this point, we've discussed uh, higher order functions. Higher order functions can receive uh, functions as parameters like this, or return another function as its, as its return value, all right? And the last thing I would like to discuss is lambda functions. 
So lambda functions are also very useful fun uh, functionalities of Python. Um, this one is to simplify the process of defining functions. All right. So let's have a look at this one. These functions are very simple and it's somewhat cumbersome to use this def uh, keyword and return keyword. But using Lambda functions, you can simplify this process, all right? So for example, to simplify defining this square function, you can use Lambda functions in this way. Uh, for defining a Lambda function, you use this Lambda keyword and he, this one indicates the parameter. And after this column, you indicate what you want to return. So these two are going to do the same thing. One caution is that you should not use return keyword here. Okay, so this one is not correct. So when we define square like this, we can square numbers. Using this square function. And for defining cube with lambda function, you just indicate lambda keyword here and indicate the parameters and just indicate the return value like this. Okay. So this is pretty simple. And lambda functions can receive more than one pair of parameters. So for example, let's say we have these two lists, my strings and my numbers. And you can combine the map function we discussed previously. And for map function, you need to pass a function here. However, if this function is very simple, you can just pass lambda here, x and y. So this one receives two parameters, x and y, and returns this tuple. And you are going to pass two lists like this. And this will create a tuple a list of tuples combining the values in the first and second lists like this. So for a map, you pass this function, right? So this function is cumbersome to define. This one, right? So this simplifies some function implementation like this, okay? And for this, we can also change this one as, rather than defining identity function, we can just pass lambda like this, okay? So these two lines implement the same thing, all right? And you can use different names like K and K like this. You just need to be consistent. If you use Y here, it has to be Y, okay? If you use P here, it has to be P. So if you are just consistent, whatever you use for the name of parameters, doesn't matter, okay? All right, so this was um, about lambda functions and higher order functions. So today we talked about uh, containers, sets, and how we define functions and some map 
default function and high order functions and lambda functions. All right, this is the end of today's lecture. Um, if you have any questions, you can stay here. Otherwise, you can leave now. Uh, thank you for your participation. Thank you, Professor.